All right, Alexander, let's answer the questions from the live stream with Jeffrey Sachs from Elza. Let's wait for the White House to tell us that under Trump's administration, even four pipelines were blown up. So what? <laughs> Nothing from to say to Ryan. that one. Yeah. From Ryan, there's a lot of talk of the world moving off the petrodollar. What effect will that have on the average American in the U.S. economy? Depends very much how it's, how it's handled and how fast it happens. Um, the risk is that if there's a massive rush from the dollar, that will cause dollars, and there are trillions of them floating around the world, to migrate where they can still buy things, which is in the United States itself. That will cause money supply in the United States to explode, and that will lead to much higher inflation within the United States. That was what happened to Britain in the 60s and early 70s, when Brit the, the Brit British pound sterling lost its reserve currency status. And it was one of the reasons why inflation in Britain in the 1960s and in the 1970s was very much higher than it was in other parts of the West. So that that is what could happen. And of course, that kind of inflation research would affect living standards in the United States. Of course, there would also be other problems. The United States could not print dollars to cover its budget and trade deficits in the way that it does now. It might have to cut back on its internal spending, which might also affect living standards, but further downward pressure on living standards. And of course, last but not least, perhaps most important of all, the United States might be confronted with difficult choices about military spending as well. Because again, the reason the United States is able to spend $800 billion a year on its military, which is more than the next nine countries combined, is because it can print dollars to do it in the knowledge that as the dollar is the reserve currency, um, that dollar will retain value. Those printed dollars will retain value. So it will be a pretty momentous event if and when it happens. Ryan says, is there still hope for America or time to leave? No, there is hope for America. In fact, I'm going to insist on this. Despite all that I've just been saying about the turbulence, the United States coming out of this process, provided it maintains political stability, retains all the means it needs to remain a very wealthy country and a great power. Maybe not the global hegemon, but in my opinion, trying to maintain the position as global hegemon is now eating into the, uh, into the economic vitality of the United States and is creating all kinds of pressures, domestic political pressures within the United States. So it could actually be, after the turbulence, a liberating moment but that will be for the Americans themselves to see it happen, to make it happen. Tyro Van Harris, thank you for that super sticker. Amir, thank you for that super sticker. M. H. Michella, thank you for that super sticker. Steve Brown, thank you for that super sticker. Akraman, thank you for that super sticker. And Honey Bell, thank you for that super sticker. Black Crow 67 says, Neocon obsession. Russia is to the West as Moby Dick is to Ahab. This is one Nantucket sleigh ride the West can't handle. Absolutely correct. I mean, was it Captain Ahab says, in death do I grapple with thee? I mean, one of the, I can't remember the exact line. I'm sure some people here do remember. But I mean, it, it, is, it, it does have an obsessional quality. I think, you know, what uh, Jeffrey said, Jeffrey Sachs said over the course of the programme, that this is the same group of people who were uh, fretting and stressing about Ukraine all the, way, all the way back in 2014 and beyond, really tells the whole story because it's not Ukraine that they're primarily interested in. It's Russia. James Hell 9000, thank you for that super chat. Metal Max 1970, thank you for that super sticker. Jeff Bickford says, thank you. And CJ says, where do you get your news on geopolitics? I want to do my own due diligence and get the news from a, from a reliable source like you guys. 
where to where to start? I mean, it's that it, that is an impossible question. I mean, each of us looks at lots of different places, and we don't get the news from one single source. I mean, you have to look at the media, obviously. You have to look at the various statements by governments, and you know, all the governments produce information. You have to go to various well-informed blogs, and we, you know, we discuss what they are. You have to listen to what experts say i mean it's it's a challenging a challenging operation if you start working hard and you retain a skeptical and independent mind and go through the internet i mean we often provide we often refer to the people we get information from you can follow all that up and eventually if you want to work as hard as we do you will get there Jason says the U.S. is acting like its women do what it wants with no accountability or an ability to, ha to handle pushback. Well, I think there's some truth in that. I I'm not sure where the women come in. But anyway, there it is. Raphael Ligode says, Alex, this line is for you. Putin is turning Ukraine into a black hole for firing weapons. Russia is standing up, winning against the whole West Army. I'm not sure which Alex. I think that's probably you, Alex. Let <laughs> me say, but uh, um, I think we both agree with that. Silas Larson says Russia Gate had many anonymous sources. Hirsch has one. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, many. That doesn't mean that they're particularly good sources. One good source is worth a million bad. Well, it's not worth a billion bad ones. A million bad ones amounts to nothing. Remember, the number zero multiplied by a hundred or a million is still zero. So if all your sources are lying to you, <laughs> then I mean that still lies, even if they seem to be corroborating each other. Whereas one good source is, you know, telling you the truth. So I don't think you can just make that kind of statement and say, you know, because Russia Gate had lots of sources and uh, uh and uh, Hirsch had only one that somehow <laughs> means that, you know, this, this story by Hirsch is somehow less reliable. What I'm going to say about that is this. I doubt very much that Hirsch had only one source. I mean, I've heard people discuss his methodology. He probably has one main source, but he will have been very careful to check out that this source is telling the truth. And that's, as I understand it, Hirsch's uh, method. Me method. Joseph says, thanks. Sparky says, great work. CJ says, do you recommend any other YouTube channels, people on social media to follow, books or newspapers we should check out in regards to geopolitics? Well, I mean, we do this all the time. We are constantly referring to people. I mean, you know, I speak a lot I mean, because, you know, on my channel, I cover Ukraine matters. I refer to what Brian Balletic at the New Atlas is saying, for example. Um, then there's, um, you know, others. <laughs> Garland Nixon has a good channel. But, I mean, you know, it, to, to discuss all of this, it's a bit invidious on this kind of live stream because, you know, inevitably we look at lots and lots of people and we don't want to live, miss one person and say this person we missed out is somehow less worthy than someone else. Again, we, you know, just follow our programmes. We always are careful to say who it is that we take our news from. And you follow our community, you see where we go, where we're guests, who we invite as guests, and you get a picture of who we think is reliable and who we don't think is. Uh, Ak Lee says, the U.S. is destroying everything in its way and believes it has complete impunity. Where is the accountability? I think that is a, that is a strong and good statement. The only thing I would say is don't talk about the U.S. Again, coming back to what Jeffrey Sachs says, it's a tiny group of people who've gained control of the levers of control in the United States. I mean, it's fascinating to see how small the decision-making group has now become. J.V. Manila says thank you. Uh, Yov. Wrestler, thank you for that super chat. 
Sanjeva says, Mr. Sachs, why do Americans and Europeans hate Russians so much? It's not because of Putin. As I remember, the Russophobia being ripe even during Yeltsin times. It's irrational. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we can all discuss this. I mean, this, this issue, I mean, um, we've discussed this on many programs. It regularly comes up on my locals' live streams, for example. I don't think there is one simple answer, actually. What I do think... And I think Jeffrey Sachs would agree here, is that actually very few people don't know very much about Russia. It's a place which people think they know about, but actually what they know, they think they know about it basically isn't isn't true. It, the actual place is very different from the um, sort of mythological place that you read about all the time in the media. And I think that is that makes it very difficult because people think they know a lot about Russia to actually persuade them that what they know about is almost entirely wrong. Wayne Hall says, we are sheep until we the people face real consequences. The road will continue to be paved. Pray faithfully, pray often. Well, I, I, I'm afraid... You may be right, and it might need some real big, terrible event to wake us up. But I would hope that people will wake up and start to act before that moment comes. Let's not underestimate the fact that, you know, a lot of people are questioning and doubting the, um, you know, the narrative that they're being given, even in the Daily Telegraph, for example, in Britain, which is the most mainstream newspaper you can find in Britain, fan, Boris Johnson fan club. There was an article on Saturday which said, which spoke about, by Jeremy Warner, saying that Zelensky is playing, he's fawning Western leaders like a violin and was deeply sceptical about Zelensky and all he represents. Sutu01 says, never believe anything in politics until it has been officially denied. Otto von <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Yeah. I don't know it's by, I've, I've heard that. I don't know it's by Kamnana says, those who told us to box up, save grandma, buy EV to save the environment, just took out Nord Stream pipeline, caused hardship and suffering for a whole continent and complain about a balloon. What, what, what can I add to that? I can't see I have anything to add to that. Thank you. Uh, Danielle says, can you comment on the disturbing images showing the chemical weapons are being used? The West is quiet and in that complicit in war crimes. There's been a lot of stories about this. And I have to say straight away, until I have some little bit more, you know, corroborative data, um, I can't, you're, I'm, you're talking about Ukraine now. I, 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 I'm not going to discuss this. The Russian Ministry of Defence, up to this point, has remained silent on this issue. So these are reports that are coming out from soldiers, from media people, but there's been no full statement about it from the Russian Ministry of Defence. If and when it comes, and I'm sure it will, by the way, then I will assess it and take a considered view. But until that point comes, that's such a big, a big accusation I don't want to jump ahead and start commenting about it before, as I said, we got all the detail. I'm sure the Russian Ministry of Defense is going to say something about this. Uh, Apple Pista, thank you for that super chat. Commander Crossfire, thank you for that super sticker. CJ says, gentlemen, what's your top favorite books? Thank you for taking the time to make this content. This is such, this is such a... Big topic again. I'll speak again. I mean, I've said this many times. I mean, I am, if you're talking about fiction, my go-to writer is Dostoevsky. Has been for a long, long time. Dostoevsky helped me out of, uh, you know, periods of depression, <laughs> which I've suffered. So, I mean, he's, he, uh, and, you know, he also led me to certain views, which I've I've, I've never sort of, gone from but you know i also like i also like tolstoy i like Chekhov, i like all the great russian writers i'm also keen on flaubert very different kind of french writer uh proust and also of course many of the great british writers 
Eliot, for example, George Eliot in particular. Um, if you're talking about works of history, well, there's so many of them, but my first point of departure is always Thucydides and his work on the Peloponnesian War. And from Ellie Bell, your thoughts on Moldova's government resigning? We did. A, I think we've done a programme on this, or at least we've discussed it in a programme. I think it's a further sign of the very severe political tensions in Moldova and of the fragility of the pro-Western government that gained power in the recent elections, largely on the votes of people who actually live outside Moldova. So I think this is a very tense situation in Moldova. I gather it's deteriorating. I gather there's protests against the government at all times. And I have to say something else, actually. I've seen some reports which suggest that the purpose of the resignation of this pro-Western government is in order to replace it with an even more pro-Western, more hardline pro-Western government, whose purpose will be to crack down on those protests. So, you know, be aware this is a very tense situation, but it does show how deeply divided Moldova has become. Samal Parla says, many involved in the actual sabotage, no leaks at all. Here, Pentagon served story to Hirsch to de-escalate. No, I don't agree with that. I, I, I can't believe that if the purpose was to de-escalate, the purpose of this leak, that that could have been the purpose of this leak. If it had been, surely it would not have included the fact that Congress itself was bypassed, which, as I said, lifts this whole affair into the level of potential illegality. So I don't think it was just done for that purpose. I think what's happened here is that there's growing disquiet in various parts of the deep state, and this obviously did come out of the deep state. There's growing disquiet within the deep state that this small group, who they levered into power, because they wanted them there, but having got them there, they find that this small group is now running the train off the tracks. <laughs> and I think that's what this is all about. And ultimately, things are not going well in Ukraine. War is being lost. And this group is taking ever more dangerous risks. And I think some people are starting to get worried. All right. Those are all the questions from the live stream with Jeffrey Sachs. Thank you very much, everybody.